Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you the automatic expandable baton. Now this thing is pretty awesome. At the flick of a switch, you are able to have this thing fire out and there's a ton of kinetic energy stored in this thing, which is really what I'm after. This is kind of an old gadget here. I've actually done a review of this before, but today we're going to be taking it apart and seeing how this thing works. All right, so the box. First of all, dead giveaway. This is not actually the one that we have here. This has like a really nice little catch here, probably for protecting the hand and also for catching anyone that's trying to come down and slash you with a knife. This would actually be really useful. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get that version. I don't know if it was available or if I just wasn't thinking, but the point is I'm gonna be applying this to a lot of different other projects because again, you have that deployability and it's really hard to replicate anything like this unless you have the machining skills. I'm currently in the process of trying to teach myself this stuff, but at the same time, for those of you who may just want to be here for the entertainment aspect, I don't know if it's really even worth me showing you how I do something because I'm pretty much learning as I go. So this just shows how it works. It does come with a little holster. Now these look like they might have a difference in the plastic. I don't know if it's just old. The adhesive is kind of saturating the tape. I don't know. That's usually one of the points where literally it's just yucky. Three sections. Push the safety switch forward. Okay, we don't really care. Instructions are pretty obvious. So what we want to do today this is actually made out of like a stainless steel. Maybe it's not stainless. It might just be chrome plated, but it's a very soft steel. So it's probably not stainless steel. I take that back. All right, so as you can see here, we have our little switch. This is basically just allowing us to either press down or be inhibited by this little plate right here. This spring, nice. Okay, let's like make sure we don't lose this stuff. Now this piece here is a little bit of a pain in the butt. You have to turn this. So what I do is just use a wrench, something of that, just to grab a nice piece of it and give you a little bit more leverage to twist this thing off. All right, so our spring has come out into one piece. That is awesome. Now this is the source of all of our kinetic energy. To make something like this, to find the spring, all that, it's just ridiculous. It would take forever. It would be way more time than it's worth. All right, so we got our parts here. Now this piece is actually kind of welded on there, very crudely, I might add. And this piece, I think, is just a, I don't even know to be honest with you, I haven't been able to get that apart. It doesn't do anything other than just hold this little piece right here in place, which I don't really know that it serves a purpose other than to maybe keep this from sliding, this little plastic grip, which is just kind of glued on. I actually would prefer if that wasn't on, so I'm probably going to end up removing this for what I have in mind, which is probably going to be a new deployable shield. From what a lot of you were commenting, and what I have come to realize is it doesn't make sense to have a shield open using electronics. If it were to have the battery die, oh, you're screwed. I guess you're not going to have the ability to actually protect yourself. And it seemed like the biggest complaint was that it didn't open fast enough. This opens pretty freaking fast, so if I could somehow harness this energy or double up on these two things to have a sort of bracket, this could be a really awesome shield. So, thinking about this. Now, let's go ahead and remove these parts. Crap, forgot. The biggest downside of this thing is once it is actually locked, you really can't get it apart unless you slam it on something solid. Sorry for those of you who are headphone users and have bleeding ears. This is how it works. So essentially you have this piece here which actually goes down and the spring is actually going up the entirety of this entire thing. Boing. So this part is a locking mechanism. 
this sits there. Whenever you press this down, boop, that goes up, allowing this thing to fly forward. And look at all that nasty crud. This is a really simple mechanism. If I was to try and machine this myself, hmm, would not be a very easy task just because I'm so inexperienced. So I'd rather take advantage of what's already on the market and not waste my time. So what do you think that I should do with this? I have an idea for a deployable shield and I'm probably going to use Kydex or some sort of metal because creating a compact little dish of some sort would make a lot more sense than having like a full deployable shield. Although if we did have two of these things, it would range pretty far. And we could probably machine something that would hold these two together or we could weld it because it is a steel. So that would be a cool little staff of some sort. Just trying to find a fucking ruler. All right, so if this thing was one solid piece, it's about three feet, four inches, which isn't bad. Now keep in mind, we could extend this thing five inches and this would actually be pretty freaking cool to have like a expandable staff, but I feel like a staff would be like five feet or more. So maybe we won't do that. I think that this is going to be a really cool project. I have a bunch of these things. Pretty sure they're not legal in my area, but for the novelty and the functionality of a deployable expanding device, I think we're good. As long as I don't take it out in public and try and fight crime or anything goofy like that. But these things have a lot of energy and I want to unleash it in a very awesome way. So, thank you so much for watching and as always, take it easy. Where is it written that all our dreams must be small ones? Oh